Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Thanks for joining me for today's CCNA 200-301 command reference. Today we're working with the service timestamps command and actually we're going to start with the no service timestamps command because what I'm doing with this command reference series, we've kicked it off with the four commands that I put on every Cisco router and switch in my lab. Not necessarily in production networks certainly, but I do use them in my lab. Now yesterday we covered IP domain lookup, or in this case no IP domain lookup. So if you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. It's on the command reference playlist here as well uh, on my channel. Now you'll notice that I have the service timestamps command, but I've got it set to no. And if you've ever taken a CCNA video bootcamp with me, which I hope you will one day if you haven't already, uh, you're nodding your head like Chris is always talking about the importance of timestamps. And, you know, we do that lab with NTP about syncing them up. Why in the world would you turn your timestamps off? More about that coming. But what I do want to show you right now is if we look at the run command or the running config, you'll see that the timestamps for debugs are turned off and the timestamps for logging are turned off. Now there is a classic gotcha here with the service timestamps command I want you to be aware of, especially for your exam. But let's do a quick control Z there. And I believe I've got one message up here. You can see here that when I did a control Z to get out of the config that I've written before I started this video, that there's absolutely no timestamp here. So we are going to start changing that right now. And let's look at our options. I always like to consider our options. Here's the service timestamps command, and we see debug and log as we'd expect because that's what we just saw in the running config. You have a separate setting for the debug timestamp and the log timestamp, but you'll also notice that there's a CR there. So this is a legal command by itself, service timestamps. Well, if we just use service timestamps, what gets enabled exactly? We are going to see that because that's the gotcha that I want to point out to you. Right now, we're going to stick with the log command because I want to show you your options here. We've got date time, uptime, and carriage return, but let's keep our eyes on date time and uptime. Now, in my humble experience, you in the field, most of the time you're going to be using date time here, but I want to show you both. And in the lab, of course, it's personal preference. It's a good idea to know how to do both anyway. So we start with date time. And that's a legal command and in and of itself. So we're going to see what we get just with that command in a moment. But we have four options. Local time, milliseconds in the timestamp. Do you want to show the time zone in the timestamp? And then finally, the year in the timestamp. But before we start tacking on options, let's just see what we get if we just do service timestamps log date time. And you'll see that we get the date. And we get the time, and that's it. And the time, of course, they're listed in military time. So that's what we've got. But maybe we want the year in there. Maybe we want some milliseconds in there as well, and the time zone. So what we're going to try to do is put all four of them in there and see what it looks like. And first off, we'll see if the router lets us do that. So let's do an up arrow here to repeat our last command. And now I'm just going to start tacking on options. I want my local time. I want my milliseconds. I want my time zone. And I'm running out of space. Year. <laughs> Ye on one line and AR on the other. That works for me. So let's go ahead and hit enter and I'll do a quick control Z here. And you'll notice we got all kinds of information here now. February 4th, then there's the year, then there's the time, there's your milliseconds, and there's your time zone. So you get all of this information with all of those options. And if you if you add two and you just want to go back and add one then separately you can do that uh, if you wanted to put four service time zone command excuse me service timestamps commands and put one option in each one you could do that you don't have to put them all on one line if you don't want to so with that in mind let's go ahead now that we've seen that i'm going to do my up arrow and then a control a to move to the front of the line i hope except that's going yeah that's not going to work so let's just do a no service timestamps log and see what our running config tells us right now. I believe we're right in the middle of it. You can see right up here at the top, no service timestamps debug, no service timestamps uptime. Now let me show you that uptime option real quick and just give you an idea what that looks like. And we're going to use log again, and this time we're going to use uptime. And you'll notice we don't have all of those options. Because uptime is uptime. It doesn't matter what time zone you're in. It doesn't matter what year it is. You're not going to get any of that. You're just going to get the uptime. So let's see what that looks like. And you can see real basic stuff here, but you can see this router's been up for 46 minutes and 7 seconds. 
but it is interesting that you have none of those other options. So that's why you tend to see out in the field, you tend to see the date time being used rather than the uptime. But as always, it's a good idea for our exams and for the real world to know how to do both. So we've got no service timestamps log uptime. Let's do a do show run from there. And now we are back to no service timestamps debug, no service timestamps log. So, so far so good. But let's talk for just a moment about why I put no there, and then we're going to go back to that gotcha. Uh, I rarely use no service timestamps in a production environment. Actually, I don't remember the last time I did that. But for clarity's sake in labs, I like to use no service timestamps, especially during my demos, because it's just kind of distracting. Again, it is strictly a convenience. It is not something that you have to do in your lab or your simulator uh, or whatever practice you get. But again, it's, it's really a personal preference. But do know how to turn those off and know how to turn them on. And you certainly know how to do that. Now, let's go back to that little tiny gotcha that I've mentioned with the service timestamps command which I have spelled successfully before and have just done so now. So we've got debug, we got log, and then we have carriage return. So what happens if I just hit enter? Well, it's an accepted command. Of course, we'd expect that because we see the CR. But let's do a show run right now because you'll notice with this message we just got that there's no timestamp in front of it. Hmm. So I have enabled service timestamps, but yet my service timestamps log isn't on, apparently. Let's see exactly what's going on. And as you can see, the debug service timestamps was turned on, but the log was not. And you'll also notice the default, uh, the default, the default there for service timestamps turns debug on and sets it to uptime. That's a really good default to know because it's really easy. You know, you just enter service timestamps, and then all of a sudden you're going through your log and you're working on a console. It's like, hey, I'm not getting any timestamps. Now you know what to look for and why if you want your log timestamps on, go ahead and put service timestamps log. Woo, a lot for one little command, but there we go. That's the second home command I like to use in my home lab. And in our next command reference, which I will post for you actually later today, we will go over the exec timeout and logging synchronous commands. Thanks for watching today's command reference. I'm Chris Bryant, and as always, thanks for making my work part of your success story.